Welcome to Elite Expert Insider Podcast, where we will inspire, motivate, and educate entrepreneurs, innovators, and growth seekers. Brought to you by Elite Online Publishing, making the best and brightest in the industry number one best selling authors. 80% of people say they want to write a book. We're assuming that's the same for you. If so, contact us at www.eliteonlinepublishing.com and make your book a reality. Hi, Melanie Johnson with Jen Foster back for another great podcast. How are you doing, Jen? Doing great. Thanks. How's everyone today? Hey, man, we just got back from SellerCon, and we are going to go through doing a series of podcasts on different people that we saw at SellerCon. So what is SellerCon, first of all? SellerCon is this amazing um, convention, and they talk all about how to sell on Amazon. But what they, you know, what you're saying, well, I don't sell on Amazon, but they had all these other terrific speakers there, one of which we're going to talk about today, David Asprey. He was the owner and starter of Bulletproof Coffee, which has just exploded. So what we're going to do, they had all these wonderful speakers there. We're going to go through and do a series of podcasts on all the different speakers and stuff that we learned because it was business stuff, not just sell on Amazon kind of stuff, if that makes sense. And we want to share what we learned with you so you can be as smart as we were and we paid uh, thousands of dollars to be there. So we're going to start. Well, and before we start, I always forget, make sure you subscribe to the podcast. We always appreciate that. Um, then you'll get notifications of all this great content that's coming up that educates you, motivates you, inspires you, and makes you more successful. So Jen, what were some of your big um, takeaways from the owner and starter of Bulletproof Coffee, David Asprey? Well, you know, I have heard of Bulletproof Coffee now for a couple of years, almost three maybe. And I didn't know his story. Like I didn't know, I'd heard him speak before, but I didn't really know how it all came about. And I just thought it was really interesting. My, my first big takeaway was, you know, he, he, was, he wasn't looking for something new. All he was looking for was something that would give him more energy. And he was actually hiking and he didn't have any energy at all. It was after a really long day and he was just wiped out. And one of the little ladies when he was um, hiking in, I forgot where, the Alps maybe, I can't remember, somewhere in another country. <laughs> You'll have to go look up his story. But they, she gave him some yak butter tea. And he thought it was kind of weird. He was like, what is yak butter tea? Like, oh, what's this going to be? And it was really delicious. And instantly he had energy. He felt good. He wasn't sick. He, you know, even with a high elevation, he just felt great. And so he took that feeling and researched it further and understood everything that goes into this. And that's how the idea of Bulletproof Coffee and why you put butter in your coffee came about. So I just thought that was a huge thing. You know, he wasn't looking for anything huge and now he has this major company around yeah. it. Yeah. He was saying that it um, gave him clarity in his brain. He couldn't be, he was in this high altitude where you get kind of foggy and his brain got so clear and uh, they had samples there, Bulletproof Coffee. And Jen and I have been to other conventions where Bulletproof, when they were starting out, like you say, three to five years ago, they were giving us samples and we're like, what's this butter in your coffee thing? Um, but it really is very good. So one of the things I was learning about him, he was saying in his, well, in his business too, part of his story was that he lost, th he was 300 pounds and now he's fit as a fiddle. So his whole aspiration is how to be um, really fit, how to maximize your clarity in your brain, your energy, and live long, but have like a great life. Um, so in his business, he was saying to be consistent, be always innovative, and see a problem and fix it. So I think that is really good. Like you always have to be curious and have new innovation and see when you see a problem, fix it. And that was one of the reasons Jen and I went to this conference was because we want to stay innovative. You know, what's new on the market? Things are changing so fast in any business that you're in. Even if you're a mom, stuff with your kids is changing so fast. So to stay on top of that, so I think it's always important to be innovative. And when you see something that's not working, to look at technology, look what's available and try and fix it right away versus uh, if they just ignore it for a while, it'll go away. And it never goes away. Like, right. You know, I've ignored problems. <laughs> but I don't want to deal with that. I'm just going to ignore it. But it's still there. And you still got to deal right. with it. Right. Well, and one of my biggest takeaways from him too was he, ha he had the three F's, which were really good. I mean, yeah. um, about fear, you know, flight, fight, flight, fight, or freeze. Is that what it is? Uh, <laughs> sure. it's, that, it's that F word that, you know, is not yeah. allowed on TV only. <laughs> right. well, it's that free, uh, you know, right. the, the, the one with the F, the asterisks and the C. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so he talked about three different 
three different F's, the fear and then the famine. And then the last one was, yeah, the one you're not supposed to say. And then he used to say it's um, uh, uh, procrastination. That last F is procrastination. Yeah. 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 But, but I think one of the biggest takeaways for me is he talked a lot about moving and, you know, a lot of, you know, Bulletproof actually has a big, uh, um, diet now surrounding or surrounding it where you're, you know, whether it's keto or whatever you want to call it. I mean, you can look it up and he'll, it, it goes through, you know, all of his um, systems of how he lost his weight with not just by drinking the Bulletproof coffee, but by yeah. making sure he exercises every day, not 60 minutes in the gym, six days a week, nothing like that. He said, just make sure right when you wake up that you're moving. Do, make sure you get those 10,000 steps in a day, do a, mor a morning walk, a night walk, and then get those 15 minutes. You know, he was saying even just 15 minutes a week of hardcore uh, workout where you're actually, you know, like the, the, what do they call it, Tabata or the fast workouts where you work out for 30 to 90 seconds and then you rest for 30 seconds and you work out really hard or the, or the yeah, interval, awesome. they call it Tabata or interval. But he said doing stuff like that at least just once a week and then making sure you're active and moving is going to help you. But of course, eating is the number one. So getting yeah. on the right schedules of eating and getting on um, making sure the foods that you're putting into your body are not processed, all of those kind of things. And he talked a lot about, about food and a lot about exercise. Yeah. And it's how you feel, you know, it's paying attention to when you eat, how does it make you feel? So many times we're throwing stuff in our mouth and then continuing on our busy day and we're not thinking about how we feel. And one of the points he made, he said, so if you're waking up and you're thinking, man, I just feel like I'm sluggish today. What's wrong with me? Is it this or that? I, I never really thought about, well, what would I eat the night before? Like, what did I put into my body in the last 24 hours? Because that's what's really affecting you. What did I eat or drink? Um, so think about that and, um, you know, that direct impact, um, how that can be. So um, that was one of my big things. And the other thing I think that uh, I had in my notes, and you may have this too, is his Law 44 was all about gratitude. Did, yeah. you, did you have a bunch of stuff about that too? Yeah. And well, and he was saying, you know, that what we've always heard all the time is your mental matters, what you think about matters and your gratitude. If you're, if you're feeling any emotion, you can change that emotion by having gratitude. So if you're upset, if you're fear, if you're angry, um, any kind of emotion you're feeling, if you have gratitude and think of three things yeah. you're grateful for, you can, you mm -hmm. can overcome that feeling of the anger or fear or whatever you're, you're facing. Yeah. I had down here. So he's like for every day, like the three things to do is what you're grateful for. Like what were your wins today? So write down and we do a journal on this. Actually, if you want to look it up, we've got a, um, a lot of our journals have these in here. So what were your wins for that day? Something you failed at that day. He said, and if you can't think of something you failed at, then you better go back and look at it again. He said, because you know, the failure things is what you learn from and that pushes you to be better. So the wins are great, but the fails were really the big key thing. And, um, and what did you learn from what didn't work? So how do you fix that? So it's your wins, um, what you failed at, things you're grateful for, and then, um, you know, what you learned from what didn't work and change that process. I think that's really important you know, to walk through this. So many times we forget to pat ourselves on the back and give us the wins for the day. And, um, and then sometimes we dwell on the failure, but we don't look at, well, what did we learn from it and how can we make that better? Yeah. And I think in society, you know, they're always promoting the wins in business place. You know, you get promoted and you get, you do an accomplishment and they, you know, give you a gift and everything's yeah. all about the win when they don't think about all of the failures that led up to that win. And that's what helps you learn and understand and make you win. So that's why it's so important to identify the failures of the day so that you can wake up the next day because it's a new day and yeah. you can learn from those mistakes and, go, and then go on to your win, whether it's a goal you're trying to reach or, or even just winning by, you know, eating the right foods that day instead of eating your donut or whatever, you know, whatever your, yeah, your thing is that, that right you go to. You just said no and said yes to the right thing. Right. <laughs> he had on the, um, this is for sleeping because he said that's really important. So, um, and I don't do this all the time, I guess, because I have kids and I'm always thinking they're going to call me or something. But my son said there's a way to do it just so like their calls get through. But he said, you want to put your phone on airplane mode 
there was an app, app, and I haven't looked this up yet, but um, when we get done with this podcast, I'm going to look it up. It's the Sonic Sleep app. He was recommending that. And, um, and I don't do this either. He was saying no tech until you're fully awake. So I have this habit, I guess now I'm going to call it a bad habit, is where I'm not really fully awake and I'll go through my phone and start going through like deleting the emails I don't want. So then when I'm more awake, I can get to the ones that I do want because I get rid of the trash. Um, but of course, Jen and I have started this new thing that um, she is so awesome that she sent me this video because we use Gmail of how to organize your email. So we are now organizing our email to get rid of all the stuff we don't want to see, put it in to folders. So we're just seeing what really counts and what matters right there. But so I love that, that challenge, you know, yeah. let's challenge that you do not do any tech until you're fully awake or even give yourself a time, like say, okay, I'm waking up at 6.30 and I'm not going to look at tech until 9 a.m. or 10 a.m. or whatever. Give yourself a time limit and then yeah. you can have that miracle morning. You can have that morning routine. You can, you can do those things that are going to help you and your family instead of just always being in front of your screen, right? Yeah. And, and your emails can wait. I mean, they've been waiting for 12 hours or 10 <laughs> hours or eight hours, however long you were sleeping. Um, yeah. But having those, that time schedule, I think is key. And, and, and the sleeping part, I think is really important too. You know, um, I think it was Tim Ferriss who interviewed all those people in his book, the Titans and he, he, you know, the average, um, the millionaire, the average hours they sleep is six and a half to seven hours. So <clears throat> If you're running on five hours or four hours or six hours or whatever sleep, you need to sleep more. So you need to schedule your sleep because your body can't function on three hours of sleep a night. It just can't. And you're going to hit a rock. You're going to hit a wall. And, and, and then the other thing he talked about was a progressive alarm. And I just keep thinking about, you know, growing up, we had those alarm clocks that would go off and they just press, eh, 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 or beep, 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 you know, like instantly you had, you had to wake up. And it jerks you out of sleep. But, you know, if you have that progressive alarm, you can actually remember your dream for a minute, right? And you can actually wake up in a normal wake. And then you can think about your dream, whether it was a good dream or bad dream. You can think about it for a minute. And then you can wake up, get up, do your morning routine, which is so opposite of when you have to wake up and you're startled. Yeah. You don't remember what you were dreaming. And you have to rush and you feel, you know. Yeah, you're like from one extreme to the other. Like you're in darkness, right. also like ah, it's like someone turning the lights on when you're dark. You're like no, exactly. Right? Versus so, if the lights gently go up. Yeah, so I think that's really important. Make sure you have a progressive alarm if you are waking up to an alarm. Um, and there's tons of different ringtones on your phones if you're using your phone or Google. Mm -hmm. If you're using the Google Home or the Alexa app, uh, Alexa to wake you up, the, the the dot or the echo. Just make sure you're using a progressive alarm. Yeah, I'm definitely going to tell my kids to do that because my I have one that keeps hitting the snooze button and maybe if he uses the progressive alarm, he won't do that. And the last thing I have in my notes from his speech was to go outside for 20 minutes. Um, and I think he said no sunscreen. Just no, get and no glasses. vitamin D. And, no, and glasses. no glasses. Yeah. So really getting that vitamin D and getting the sun, he said that will help you sleep a lot more. And so many people are not outside in the sun. Um, but he was saying, like, I, I, I got the gist that if it was a cloudy day, it wasn't as effective as if it was a sunny day. Right. It's, it's meant to be to be in the sun or even to ground yourself. So take your shoes off, walk around in your garden, on your lawn. Um, get some sun, you know, especially with technology today, we're, we're in behind our computers or in the office, or, I mean, even if you're driving, you have the wind, you know, you have your, your windows that are protecting you from vitamin D. So yep. open that sunroof and get some sun in. <laughs> Yeah. And hey, so what we're going to do is um, we're going to put some in the chat or in the comments, Jen will put the links to where you can find some of our journals that have where you can write down what you're grateful for and success and win. So you can find those. And uh, I hope you got a lot out of this. This has reminded me like I need to go back and do some of these things. So um, it's always good to learn something, write it down and then teach it. Then it really gets into your nervous system. So thanks for joining us today. And uh, remember, we're sponsored by Elite Online Publishing, which is the company that Jen and I own. And and we make our authors bestsellers and teach them how to use their book for their business. But we just love, love, love to share people's stories and change the universe by sharing your story. We'll see you next time. Bye. If you'd like to create the most powerful advertising tool for your business, contact us at EliteOnlinePublishing.com, where we will help you create, publish, and make your book a number one bestseller and show you how to get new leads and more revenue for your business. 
If you'd like to check us out on our Facebook page, we have a free book for you as our gift. Just go and click free book. Remember to subscribe and leave a comment for our podcast. We would love to hear from you.